This is one of those texts, I've said this before when you read it, did you hear my voice at the end of it? The gospel of our Lord, right? Gospel means good news. Did that sound like good news? There's fire raining down on earth. There's a baptism I have to do that has to be completed. And division. Yeah. I did. don't think I came to bring peace, which is interesting because this morning, did you, did you hear it at the very beginning of the service when we did our confession and forgiveness? Be at, Jesus says to be at peace, I said. And then here in our gospel lesson, it says, Jesus says, I did not come to bring peace, but division. So what is this? What does this mean? And how is this good news? And actually, if you listen to all of the readings this morning, none of them really had great news for us, right? The, the Old Testament reading said that God's word is like fire and like a hammer that breaks rocks to pieces. And Hebrews tells us about people who were sawed in half and stoned to death and put in skins of sheep and goats and prosecuted and tormented. The good news of God. But oh, how I wish that the fire I were to bring upon this earth was already kindled and already coming. What does it mean to be on fire? I read a... Well, actually, it would hurt if you're on fire, right? What do they teach you in school? Stop, drop, and roll, right? If you're on fire, you stop, you don't run, because what does that do? It fans the flames, right? So, so you stop dropping. If you're physically on fire, you stop dropping. What does it mean to be on fire? I read something this past week about a comedian who talked about how his wife once told him that they had a, a medium relationship or a, a, a warm relationship, right? Said our relationship is warm, which he thought was very good, right? Until he went and looked up what warm means, which is not hot or cold. It's just kind of like Jesus says to the church in Revelations, right? I spit you out because you're lukewarm. If you're hot, you're doing something. If you're cold, you're just dead. But you're just kind of here. To be warm is to just be, yeah. But what does it mean to be on fire, right? What does it mean to be set ablaze? What is this fire that Jesus is talking about? What do you think of when you read it? Oh, how there's fire to be kindled and I wish it were already kindled. What do you think? Anyone? What? Hell? Hell? Faith. Faith? The Holy Spirit. The Holy, ooh. Faith, the Holy Spirit. Is it, is it hell? Destruction, the end of the world? Or is it this? It's very interesting that you're sitting on opposite sides of the room here. <laughs> it plays in very well to this. All right, which one is it? Jesus says, I mean, this whole chapter, he's been talking about the end of times and he's headed towards, where is he headed? To Jerusalem, right. This is the journey passage in Luke where Jesus is traveling to Jerusalem to go and be crucified, right? And the baptism that he has to undergo will be done by God. And it probably refers to his death on the cross is what it is here. But what is the fire? Is it the eternal destruction that's going to come upon the earth? Or is it... This kindling of a flame and Jesus saying, oh, how I wish you guys would get this. Why don't you get it? Why can't the fire that I want to be coming down upon this earth already be kindled and burning? I have a question. Who here has watched the Olympics this week? (laughs) Who, Who here has turned on your TV? So, therefore, you've watched the Olympics, right? Who knows who David Bodia and Steele Johnson are? Four people. Five. They are... They're divers, right? And specifically, together, they are a pair of synchronized divers for the United States of America. And they won... They won a gold medal. Monday night. 
Did anybody catch the interview after? The interview after they won the gold medal, the interviewer was asking them, you know, David had been to many Olympics previously and has won a bronze medal and a silver medal and now gold medal. And the, and the interviewer is asking him, you know, doesn't this um, take all the pressure off of you? Isn't it good to have won a bronze, a silver and a gold medal and to have all of these achievements under your under your belt? And David, not blinking an eye, says, yes, but really what, what it is for me is that my identity is wrapped up in Christ. It doesn't matter what happens on that diving platform. It doesn't matter what happens anywhere. I can come and do my best and know that I'm here because Christ is with me. And he said, and also because of this young man, Steele Johnson is is new to the Olympics. And Steele said the exact same things when when the interviewer asked him. He said, well, David said it perfectly. My identity is wrapped up in Christ. It has nothing to do with how I perform. I'm here with all of these great athletes having a wonderful time. But it doesn't matter how we perform. My identity is not in whether or not I'm a bronze medalist, a silver medalist, or a gold medalist, whether I'm an Olympic athlete or not. My identity is in Christ. That's being on fire. That's understanding what God has told us. Understanding what Jesus has been trying to explain to these disciples up to this point where he says, oh, I wish you guys just got it. Because Jesus wants for each and every one of us to have a love that's burning deep in our souls, constantly yearning to get out of control. Wants it to go so that our lives just continually are driven and led by what's happening inside of our hearts and our lives. To do something out in the world. Right? Because if you read Hebrews, all of these people were driven by something. And they went under all of these hardships. Right? Something else I read this past week talked about what does it cost for us to come to worship? Well, we've got to get up early on Sunday morning. We don't get to sleep in. For those of us that donate to the church, it costs us a little bit of money that we give. And it costs us about... An hour to two hours on a Sunday morning to come here. If you read Hebrews again, right? They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by swords. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destituted and persecuted. Yet all of these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised. These people did not get what God told them they were going to but they still lived their lives in such a way that they aimed forward and walked in life because of that promise. That's what it means to be set on fire. It's all about that fire, that consuming fire burning within us. Right? The the thing I just said a little bit ago that Jesus wanted us burning deep in our soul. It's a song. I know one person recognizes it. Did anybody else recognize it? The the actual verse there is, there's this love that's burning deep in my soul, constantly yearning to get out of control, wanting to fly higher and higher. I can't abide standing outside of the fire. Because Jesus came to show us a way to live. He's not talking about the end of the world. He's talking about the Holy Spirit coming into our lives, consuming us in such a way that it motivates us and moves us to do things that we're not going to think that other people around us are going to want to. This past week I did a funeral for a member of this congregation and I heard a story about the vote to build this building and how it came down to one person who voted to build the building in opposition to their family. Their family didn't want to build the building. But their vote on council was the deciding vote on whether or not this congregation would move from the building that was about ready to fall down on people's heads To come over here to continue living. And the whole story behind this congregation moving from that spot to this spot is riddled with, you can't do that. We're not going to support you in doing that. I've heard that over and over again. But the people that were here saw what God was doing and said, (laughs) God doesn't want us to go to O'Connell Falls or O'Connell or Green Bay. God wants us right here, right now. And that's what we're going to do. 
We don't care if you're going to support us because we know that God is calling us to be here. God puts that yearning deep down inside of us to go out and to do something. And if we contain, can maintain focus on what is important and what God is calling us to, then that fire is going to well up in each and every one of us and set us forward onto a path that will be where God is leading us to. Because the Hebrews passage ends with one of my... Fa- i got a lot of favorite Bible verses, if you haven't figured that out. But one of my favorite Bible verses is the beginning of chapter 12 of the, verse of, of, of the book of Hebrews, right? Because it talks about... Um, we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses... Um, All of these saints that have gone before us and all of these saints that are sitting here with us now. But these people will help us maintain focus. But it's our job. The one thing that we have to do is to be cross-eyed. Does it say that? It doesn't actually say that, but that's what it means. You're supposed to be cross-eyed. Not cross-eyed where you're you're looking in two different directions. But cross-eyed in... Exactly. When you look, all you're seeing is the cross. Focusing your faith on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Because if you can focus on Jesus and see him and everything that's going on in your life, you are going to be consumed by a fire that's going to drive you out into the world to to take care of all of the problems that are going on out there. And you might think, well, what can I do? But one person can have an impact on another life that can have a huge impact on the way things work. Because one person can make a difference. To quote another song, I woke up this morning and saw a world full of trouble now. Thought, how would we ever get down this far? How is it ever going to turn around? So I turned my eyes up to heaven and I screamed, God, why don't you do something? Well, I just couldn't bear the thought of people living in poverty, children sold into slavery. The thought disgusted me. So I shook my fist at heaven and said, God, why don't you do something? And he said, I did. I created you. If not us, then who? If not now, if not me and you, right now is the time for us to do something. If not now, then when will we see an end to all of this pain? It's not enough to do nothing. It's time for us to do something. Because God created each and every one of us and instilled in us a fire of His Holy Spirit to send us out into the world, to not be complacent and sit on our hands, to not be lukewarm and just sit around and think that somebody else is going to take care of it. It's our job to go into the world and make sure that they know that God loves them. And that not means only us telling them, but showing them in tangible ways. So how can we... As this body of Christ that wanted to be here and knew that God needed them to be here throughout the history of this congregation, how can we be God's hands and feet? How can we just not talk about it? Because that's the next verse. I'm so tired of talking about how we can be God's hands and feet. It's easier to say than to be. We live like angels of apathy who tell ourselves, it's all right, somebody else will do something. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of life with no desire. I don't want a flame. I want a fire. I want to be the one who stands up and says, I'm going to do something. How can we fan that flame? How can we live in the desires that Christ has shown us and given us and live out his life here in this place as his hands and feet? Because the fire that Jesus wants to rain down on us is not a fire of destruction, but a fire of his love that's going to set this whole world ablaze. How can we help to kindle that spark?